CATV is proudly presented by Toyota. Let's start with Ben Stokes. Yeah, look, it was a, a fantastic innings, wasn't it? It was uh, uh, full of character uh, on a tough wicket. Uh, you know, with those cracks, they, as a batter, it's always daunting to see them. And he put them at his head and, uh, you know, I thought that was an outstanding 100. Did it give you genuine hope? At what stage in the dressing room did you start to think, hey, there's something on here? Well, you never know in sport, do you? That's the beauty of it. Um, and that partnership was just starting to build. Um, but as always through this series, just when we've got a partnership going, we haven't managed to continue and take it into big partnership. Have to face facts. During these three test matches, Australia have been the better side. Yeah, without a doubt. In sport, that, that can happen. Uh, and, you know, it's not for the lack of, lack of effort or trying from the lads or the preparation. Um, we've been outskilled in all aspects. Um, it's hard to say that um, as a player, but uh, that's the honest truth. Uh, we've got to keep looking at ourselves, keep doing what we can do, which is working as hard as we can to try and turn it around. Yeah, we, we, if fielding is a benchmark, it's been strange that a good fielding side has had a bad series. Yeah, um, it's over a number of years we've been a good fielding side and for some reason, like all aspects of our play, we've been below the standards we set ourselves. Alistair, have Australia surprised you? No, not at all. Um, you know, we knew, they're gonna, we knew what a good side they were in England um, and we knew how tough any side coming to Australia is to play and you've got to be at the top of the game to compete with them. And we haven't been there and they've been very ruthless in the fact they've never let us back, letting us back into any game that when they got ahead of us. Ahead of us. And how bad a blow after Brisbane was it to lose one of the rocks of your side, Jonathan Trott? Yeah, of course, that's, um, you know, he's been an outstanding performer for us for a long period of time. And when you take out that quality, um, it's obviously hard to, hard to replace straight away. Um, but there's a lot of talent in the dressing room. I know it's all, everyone's hurting now. Um, it's, you know, incredibly tough place to be. Um, that happens in sport. There's a winner and a loser at the moment. We're at the end of the losing, uh, the losing dressing room and it hurts. But, you know, all we can do is work as hard as we can on the games and come out on Boxing Day and try and put in a better performance. I was going to ask you about those two tests. A lot of supporters flying over for those two matches. Yeah. We're incredibly lucky with our support. I also thank every, all the English guys who turned up here, and of course the Barmy Army. You know, you know, it doesn't matter if we win or lose. Uh, to, it seems to them, obviously, they're as disappointed as we are. But the support we get, it means so much to the dressing room, uh, and it keeps us going. Um, we're just sorry we haven't played as cricket we know we can't, we're capable of. Can you get the, the minds right and the bodies right to win these two test matches? Yeah, that's the challenge. Um, you know, it hasn't, doesn't really change anything. Every game you go into, you try and win. Um, yes, the ashes are gone, which is going to hurt for, um, for a while yet. But we have to make sure we go into those, into those games with that right mindset. I hope you find it. Good luck. Thanks for your time. Cheers, Mark. Thanks. The England captain, Alistair Cook. And now we turn. Here he comes. He's bounding in. Michael Clark, ladies and gentlemen. On a scale of 1 to 10, how does it feel? 10 out of 10. I don't think it gets much better. Uh, like I said before, I think team performance throughout the first three matches has been outstanding and every single one of the guys in, uh, in that change room or standing on the other side of the ground now deserves a, a lot of credit. They've worked exceptionally hard. We went through some, I guess we went through what England's going through now not that long ago in, in the UK and I know what Alistair's feeling and I think Alistair certainly deserves a lot of credit playing his 100th test match and um, to be able to put up such a great fight in three test matches, you know, the England team deserve credit for that but I, again I don't want to take any credit away from the Australian players. They've worked hard and they've got a uh, earn, earn reward. Tell us about the lunch break today because the dressing room must have just been flinching a bit. I wouldn't know. I went and had lunch quickly and then went and sat in my little uh, cubicle and didn't say too much, to be honest. But look, I think the boys bowled really well this morning. We didn't have much luck. There was a few plays and misses. Hit the ball, hit the crack a few times. So I think it was about executing our skills, like we said uh, this morning, and, uh, and hang on, hanging on to our chances. And we'll thought we'll every chance of winning the game today. I know there's a lot of players you'd like to single out, but I'm going to go for one. Mitchell Johnson. Yeah, look, I think I could talk about every individual player and I don't think it would be fair to, to leave anybody out. There's no doubt Mitch deserves a lot of credit. I think I said before the start of this series that if he bowls the way he's been bowling over the last 6 to 12 months, I wouldn't be surprised if he got man of the series. And he's not far away, but like I say, I think it's been a team performance over three test matches and that's why we sit here as winners today. Your fielding's been fantastic, Mark. You've caught everything. Our fielding certainly improved out of sight, and again, our support staff, I think Steve Rickson, our fielding coach, we've got Mike Young in as uh, helping us with our ground fielding. I think those two coaches are as good as anyone around the world, and I guess you can see the improvement in our fielding. I was going to ask you about all the people behind the scenes who don't always get mentioned. 
Yeah, look, I think there's been a lot of people over the past couple of years, or well, certainly since I've taken over the captaincy, that deserve a lot of credit that you probably don't see out on the field. So without their help, and those guys know who they are, without their help and support and sticking by us through the tough times, you know, we had a rough time of it in, in the UK recently and we copped a lot of criticism and we probably deserved it. We didn't perform as well as we'd like, but we also had a lot of support from fans in Australia and from people in, in, involved in Cricket Australia and certainly from within the group. So to those people that are stuck by us, thank you. And. Uh Darren Lehman's a popular figure around the place, isn't he, in your dressing room and around Australia? He always has been. He was as a player and he is as a coach. He's, uh, he's done a fantastic job. He's made life very comfortable for all the players. But on the other side, he's made us work hard. He's made us maximise our potential. And I think you've, you know, the Australian public have got to see this team moving forward. We want to get back to being the number one test team in the world. This has been a great start. What about 5-0? That'd be gold. That'd be fantastic. But again, we know we're playing against a fantastic opposition. You're never riding on off. They're going to come out tougher in Melbourne, and I'm sure we're in for another tough test match. Do you feel that you might have launched a new era for Australian cricket? Uh... I want to say no because I think, like I said, I think the work that the guys have done over the past 12 months to two years, this is a reward for that. This doesn't just happen. It's not about all of a sudden we've switched things on or decided to turn up to training. Um, guys have been working exceptionally hard on their games for a long time and this is the reward for that hard work. Michael, finally, the captain goes through a lot in any cricket team, never mind at international level and never mind here in Australia. This is your hundredth test match and during it you've claimed the greatest prize. Just means I'm getting old, I guess, playing 100 test matches. Oh, look, I, I guess I couldn't have asked for uh, a better 100th test match. You know, I, I said since taking over the captaincy, I learnt very early that sometimes your greatest memories in the game, uh, you don't perform as well as you'd like personally, personally. And obviously, every time I walk out the bat, I would like to score runs, but I'd give anything to win the Ashes, and so would every one of those blokes over there. You're going to have some party now. We're going to enjoy a couple of beers, I would imagine. So I think all the boys are looking forward to it.